Thank you, Pastor Kerry. Who's thankful for Pastor Kerry and having small groups? Yes. If you aren't in a small group, find one, get involved. My small group's just kicking off here in a couple weeks, and we can't wait. We're continuing our Red Letter series this morning, and you can turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 16. We're going to be jumping there right away. Luke chapter 16, and then if, uh, if you want, you can go ahead and put a finger in Matthew chapter 6. We'll be jumping there in just a moment. But Luke chapter 16, whether it's your paper version, your electronic version, or the big screen version up here on the screens. Luke 16, starting in verse 1. Jesus told his disciples, there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management, because you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said to himself, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. Verse 5. So he called in each one of the master's debtors. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? 900 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it 450. Then he asked the second, and how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told him, take your bill and make it 800. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than the people of light. Verse 9, this is an important one. If you have your Bible, highlight this, underline, underline this. Verse 9, I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much, and whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and and money. And jumping to Matthew chapter 6, it says this, verse 21, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And then jumping to verse 24, this might sound familiar. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for this parable, God. I pray uh, for every person here that you would speak something new to us. I pray you'd speak through me, that you'd take out anything in my notes that should not be there, that you'd add whatever needs to be there, and that we would leave here changed this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Turn to your arm and say amen. amen. Are you awake, 1030 service? Are you awake? Some of you, this side is quiet. Are, is this side awake over here? Yeah. All right, they're awake. This side? Yeah. And I know the middle sections are, are good, right? This morning, as we continue our Red Letter series, I want to look at this idea of generosity and, and being generous. So what, what does it mean to be generous? Being generous is the opposite of being selfish, right? Being selfish and being generous are total opposites. Being generous is, is giving up your time, your money, your abilities, your food, and being happy to do it, right? I think that you could give up all of those things and be grumpy, and that would not be you giving out of generosity. That'd be you giving out of obligation. So it's being happy to do it. It's being happy to, to give things away. And what you'll see is that as we are generous, the world gets a lot bigger. Our, we, we see far beyond New Hope, far beyond Urbandale, Des Moines. We, the world gets a lot bigger. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24, it says, The world of the generous gets larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. Now, this is a powerful verse. Why? Because some of you guys, you don't even share French fries with your family. Like, you go to Bebop's, and you get the fries, and, and somebody gets the, the shake, and they, like, want to dip some of their fries in their shake. Any, any saved people in here that do that? Right? They want to they dip some fries in the shake, and you won't even share your french fries. You're so stingy. But that's how so many of us can be with our money, with our time, with our talents. We, we, we hold on to it, and what you'll find is you'll find that you're in this claustrophobic box. 
Because you, you aren't, you're receiving, you've received from God, but you aren't releasing it. And you, you, you only see certain things around you, and you're saying, God, I, I just feel stuck. God, I feel like there's more for me than, than what I'm experiencing right now. I'll tell you what it is. It's you being generous. Turn to your neighbor and say, be generous. Be generous. I don't know about you, but I want the big picture, right? I want to I see the whole world. I don't want to just be stuck in this little box, in this little bubble of Urbandale, but it takes being generous, and it takes having the right heart. How many have heard this parable in Luke before, the, the shrewd manager or the unjust steward? I, as I was, some people were asking me earlier this week what I was speaking on. I told them, oh, I'm speaking on the shrewd manager. They're like, what? I've never heard that. Multiple people. And, and this is a verse that maybe you haven't heard before. And I just want to clear some things up on this verse, okay? Jesus is not saying in this verse, hey, you know what? You can steal money as long as you're generous with it, all right? Some of you are like, shoot, right? He's not saying you can steal money if you're generous with it. He's saying, uh, he's not saying as, as long as it's for a good purpose, go ahead and, and like steal money from work, right? Don't steal money from work. We want you to be generous. We want you to give the missions, but we don't want to use the missions dollars to bail you out of jail because you stole from your work, okay? So be generous. Use worldly wealth. What is he saying by worldly wealth? Jesus is saying uh, things having to do with this earth, things that have to do with this earth. And, and he's saying in your earthly life, use materials from earth to make friends that will endure into eternity. Use things that we have to make friends, to build up the kingdom of God, to lift up the name of Jesus. So we see this, this verse, the, the shrewd manager, the, the unjust steward. What is stewardship? Kind of a Christian definition of stewardship would be this, utilizing and managing all resources God provides for the glory of God and the betterment of his creation. It's using what God has given us, right? When I was at North Central, I thought like, hey, I'm going to be a good steward of what God has given me. And at North Central, every semester, they give you so many uh, uh, chapel skips and class skips. And someone would ask me like, hey, are you going to go to chapel day? I'd be like, ah, you know, it doesn't really line up with, with the plan that I have right now. They're like, what do you mean you, you, it doesn't line up? Like, Listen, God gave me these skips, and I need to be a good steward and use all of them, right? Like, I, I would have my whole chapel schedule mapped out, like, okay, I need to skip 25 times because God's given me 25 skips, so I got to use everything God gave me, right? And yes, that's using what God has given me, but I want you to, to hear something in this definition. It's for the betterment of his creation, we can use our money on all sorts of things. We can use our time, we can use our talents, our abilities on all sorts of things, but being a good steward for God is using it for the betterment of his creation. We're talking about stewardship. In, the, in this verse, we see this man referred to as the steward, the manager. This is someone who would manage someone else's wealth. It would not be theirs, but they would have the privilege to use the master's wealth to profit the master. This is someone the master would have trusted, someone who would have been very faithful to the master. And in this story, this man did not act as if he were the steward, but he acted as if he was the master, and he wastes all the master's wealth. And the master, he, he, he finds out what's going on, he calls for an audit of the books, and he fires this guy. And just like so many times that we can read a Bible story or, or we can see something on the news, I think it's so easy to point the finger and say, shame on you. Turn to your neighbor and, and do the little finger, like go like this. So easy to say, shame on you. Like, how could you do this? You, you stole all your master's money. That's ridiculous. But just for a moment this morning, I want us to look at and examine our own lives and see how are we being stewards of what God has given us. So I want to look at four different areas of stewardship this morning, and the first is this, stewards of time. So if you're taking notes, because note takers are world changers, that was weak, all right? In youth, we say that note takers are world changers, so I'm going to try that again and act like that first one didn't happen. So I'm going to say, because we know note takers are, and then you're going to say world changers, all right? So if you're taking notes, because note takers are Oh, come on, 1030. The first thing is stewards of time. How many know that our days are numbered, right? There's only so much time we have on earth. Each year, 365, or if you have a leap day in there, you know how many days there are, 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes, 60 seconds. Every, it comes down to every second. There's only so much time that we have. 
Dick Brogdon with, with Live Dead in his devotional, he starts off with this challenge to tithe your time. How challenging is that? To, to tithe your time. That's 144 minutes of day that we're tithing to God. That we're saying, God, you can have this time. But how many times do we complain or do we use this excuse? Man, God, I, I wish I could read my Bible. I wish I could spend some time in prayer, but I just don't have enough time. Like maybe if you made the day 25 hours, 26 hours long, I could fit reading my Bible in there. But we use this excuse and God's saying, what do you mean you don't have enough time? Two hours and 24 minutes of every day belong to me. Those aren't even for you to use. You, you, you owe God 10% of your time. And, and so often we, we say, oh God, I just don't have time to do that. But we find that, that we can sit and watch a horrible Netflix docu-series for who knows how long, right? Till the Netflix screen comes up and, and says that horrible thing like, are you still watching and you just wanna get in a fight with the people at Netflix? Like, quit judging me, right? We can sit there and watch Netflix for how long? We can watch a football game, a basketball game for how long? We can sit there and watch some HGTV, Chip and Joanna Gaines, Fixer Upper, right? And dream of all the ways that we can fixer up our house but we don't give God half the time to tell us how we can fix up our lives. How are we using that time? Because God's saying 10% 10, 10 of it, two hours, 24 minutes, that belongs to me. Recognize that the time that you have has been given to you by God. We see that in this story, this manager, he uses his time wisely. He finds out that he's gonna be fired and he uses the position he's at to make friends for himself. And Jesus says in this, which is very interesting, that people of this world are way better at doing it than people of light. The world is way better at using resources to reach people than the church is better at using resources to reach people is what he's saying. How, how, how are we using the time that we have? Are, are you using that time to make friends like this man was? Right, every day you probably have a lunchtime at work that, that you can take off. Are you sitting there looking at your Facebook friends or are you trying to make friends? Are you trying to invest in people? Are, 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 you, are you finding time that you have each day or each week to spend some time serving somewhere? Serving in early childhood, in the kids, in youth, serving at a school. I've had the privilege the last couple school years to be able to serve at Urbandale Middle School in this class called Oasis. Um, and in this class, I, I help students with their homework, study for tests. I get to go on walks around school and just talk about life with them. And, and it's been a great time to, to be able to invest in that. But what I found is that in that time, I was able to make a friend with the teacher, Mrs. Johnson, and she's actually here visiting this morning. Mrs. Johnson, can you wave to everybody? Sorry, I put you on the spot. But are we using our time to invest? Are we using our time to serve? Are we using our time to, to spend time in the Word? And what you'll find is that, that as you invest in people, as you invest in things, you're gonna make friends that endure into eternity. So are you being a good steward of your time or are you hoarding your time? The second thing is stewards of our gifts and our abilities. Gifts and abilities. Every gift, every talent, every ability you have has been given to you by God. Maybe it's playing an instrument, maybe it's singing and you could, you could be on the worship team. Maybe it's that you're super friendly and you could be greeting out at the doors. Maybe it's your attention to detail and you could be on the cleaning team. Maybe it's your knowledge, like you are super smart and you'd be doing the kids in Oasis class a lot better favor than what I do them when I help them with their homework, okay? Maybe it's making coffee, maybe it's making cookies and you're like, oh man, I just, I'm so good at making cookies. I'm gonna make a whole batch and bring it to Pastor Zach today because I just wanna bless him. But are you using the ability that God has given you? I heard, I read this this week as I was studying and it's, and it's this, a thief says, what's yours is mine, I'll take it. A selfish man would say, what's mine is mine, I'll keep it. But a generous man, a Christian would say, what's mine has been given to me by God, I'll share it. Are you being generous with what God has given you? Are you being a good steward of the talents, of the abilities that God has given you? Or are you using them for yourself? Or are you using them to bring glory to yourself? But we can use those things to lift people up, to encourage people who are hurting and who are broken. So we see stewards of time, stewards of gifts and abilities. And the third thing is this, stewards of the gospel. Stewards of the gospel. The, the greatest gift ever given has been entrusted in you. Are you keeping this for yourself or are you sharing it 
with others because this is the one thing that changes everything. It, it, it changes everything. When someone is telling you about what's wrong in their life, do you sit there and just, just listen and, and nod and maybe offer up a hug? Or do you say, hey, I know you're going through this, but guess what? There's this guy named Jesus who came from heaven to earth, fully God, fully man, lived a perfect life, yet died and paid the ultimate price on a cross for you and for me, even though I would sin, even though we'd make mistakes, that, that he would forgive us and that he has so much more for us. Are you stewarding the gospel? Are you taking the opportunities you have to share about Jesus' love? Because just like this manager, one day we are going to have to give an account of how we stewarded the things that God gave us, of how we stewarded our time, our abilities, the gospel. And, and maybe you're here and you're struggling because you have shared about Jesus with some people. You have shared the gospel and you've been rejected. But, but understand this, it, it's not about uh, the result, it's about your faithfulness in that. It's about your obedience. If God's telling you, go tell them about me, it, it, who cares how they respond? I mean, obviously we want them to respond and accept Jesus, but that's not for you to worry about. Your job is to obey Jesus and, and do what he's telling you to do. I heard this quote this week that God has called us to play the game, not keep the score. He's calling us to play the game. Are you playing the game? Are, 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 you, are you putting yourself in there? Are you being a steward of that? Are you being generous with the things that have been given to you? The fourth thing is this, is stewards of material wealth. Stewards of material wealth. I wanted to look back at, at Luke chapter 16. It says, I tell you, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourself so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. And then in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, I want to look at this again. It says, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where they do not get destroyed, where they are not stolen. Verse 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If you go back and look through the Gospels, one thing you'll see is there are so many parables about money. Almost a third of the parables were about money. I think God thought that money was important. I mean, just a little bit ago, we read two different scriptures that, that talked about you can't have two masters, either God or money. Two different times it says that. I think God thought we might struggle with serving money over God. I want to ask you this question this morning. Do you love money and use people, or do you use money to love people? Do you love money and use people, or do you use money to love people? What, what one do you value here? Stewardship, understand, stewardship of our money, it goes far beyond the tithe. It, it goes far beyond it. Yes, the first 10% is a good way for, to begin faithful stewardship of our money, but what are you doing with the other 90% as well? Because it, we, we look at tithing altogether wrong, right? It's not how much of my money am I going to give to God. It should be how much of God's money am I going to keep for myself, because if we really believe this, that everything we have been given has been given to us by God, it's not, hey, I did this, so I'm going to give some to God. It's, hey, God, provide, God gave this to me. God gave me this job. God gave me these abilities that got me this job that gives me this, this paycheck. And now how much am I going to keep for myself compared to how much am I going to give to God? It, it goes with everything, of our time, of our abilities, all of those things. How much are you keeping for yourself? As we've been talking this morning, some of you have been like, okay, I can be generous with my time. I, I, I can be generous with that. I can be generous with my abilities. I can be generous with the gospel. But as soon as I brought up money, right? Some of you even thought when I first read those verses, they're like, oh man, he's going to talk about money. And they're like, no, he's not. He's the middle school pastor. He's not going to talk about money. <laughs> but then I brought it back to money. And now you're like clenching in your seat. Some of you are about to like bust a vein in your forehead. Like, oh, don't talk about money. They just want my money. Money in church is a tough topic. You can talk about all sorts of stuff, but it's like once money is getting talked about, it's like, oh man. Think about, just, think about for a moment just following Jesus. Right? When, when we follow Jesus, we say, God, I surrender my life to you. Like, you can have my life. You can have all of me. Say, God, you can have my relationship. Some of you are like, God, please take my husband. Please. <laughs> right? God, take my wife. Right? We, we, we surrender that. Some of it, tonight's baby dedication, some of you are like, God, please take my kids. You can have them. Right? We, we're willing to surrender all sorts of things, but the moment we talk about money, it's like, hmm, 
Do we have to talk about it? Do we have to go there? And I get it. Like, some of you are uncomfortable because of past experiences. Maybe you're at a church where, where the, the pastor mishandled it. They, they took advantage of people's finances. But hear me. We can't let a past poor experience keep us from what God's plan and potential is for our lives. And you'll see that as you are generous, as you steward the things that God has given us, God's going to pour out more blessings on us. Are you faithful? Are you being a steward with the money? Understand this. Okay, hear me. God does not want your money. Turn to your neighbor and say, he doesn't want your money. He doesn't want your money. God, he wants your heart. He wants your heart. He wants all of you. Some of you, you've been coming to church for a long time, and you haven't fully surrendered everything to God. You've been coming, and you've just been surrendering certain parts of your life, but Jesus did not come for a makeover. He came for a full-on takeover, and he can't mold your heart unless he has a hold of your heart, and he cannot transform what he does not touch, and he won't touch it unless you offer it up to him. So are you surrendering your heart? Are you saying, God, you can have all of me, not just this area, not just this area. You can have every single part of me. Because what you'll see is that as you surrender everything, you become a generous in everything. You become generous, because it's not, it's not even ours. But does Jesus truly have your heart? In verse 21 it says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This verse confused me uh, when I was looking at it this week, because I was looking at it backwards all along. I always thought, hey, if I have a heart for something, then I'm going to give to it. But look at the order. It says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be. The heart, it, it's, it's following the treasure, right? It, it, some, it, it boils down to this, that investment peaks our interest. Investment peaks your interest. I could care less about stocks unless I'm investing in stocks, right? I'm, I'm not checking the stocks unless I have money in the stocks. I'm invested, so it peaks my interest. I could care less about how close New Hope is to our goal for missions this year unless I am giving to missions, it, it piques the interest. The money, it follows your heart. Or your heart, it follows the money. said that backwards. I, I was going back to my old way that I preached it. But, but it's, it's following it. Where is your money? Because your heart will follow. I, I heard it said this week that your bank account is, is a good indication of where your heart is. Your credit card statement is a good indication of where your heart is. So where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Hear me though, money is not bad, okay? It's not a sin to have money. It's not a sin to have nice things. It's not bad, it's not bad to have money. It's not you having the money, it's the money having you, right? It's, it's the money controlling us. It's not how, it's not the other way around. So are you stewarding your material wealth? I want you to look at this verse in, in Luke chapter 6, verse 37. It says this, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. Look at this last little bit. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Now this might surprise you, but nowhere in this verse did it talk about money. But how many times have we heard this when it talks about, when we talk about giving, when we talk about an offering of like, all right, if you give, it's gonna be given back to you. But nowhere in this does it talk about money. It talks about giving judgment, it talks about giving forgiveness, and that's gonna be measured back to you. It's gonna be given back to you in return. I heard this story this week of this pastor who was asked by this lady, how often do you talk about giving at your church? He told her, I talk about giving every single week. She's like, oh, talk about giving. You just start, want people's money, you sicko, right? And he's like, I think you asked the wrong question. I think what you meant to ask is how often do I talk about giving money? Because giving is an all the time thing. The God, you can't talk about the gospel without talking about giving. For God so loved the world that he, he gave. Giving, it, it's all the time. Right? If, if, if in a marriage, if you want your marriage to work, it takes both people willing to give in that marriage. It, it's, it's an all the time thing. And the enemy, he's sneaky. Because he, he wants to pervert your idea of giving with this idea of money, of just saying, oh, they just want 
your money. They're, they're just going to use your money somehow. But giving, it, for, forget the money. It's about giving our lives. It's about giving our time, giving our abilities, giving the gospel. Are you being a good steward of it? And understand this, that God, he doesn't want to just bless you. He's not just like, like oh, I'm going to randomly bless this person. God doesn't want to just give a blessing to you. He wants to give a blessing through you. And the measure you use will be given back to you. Jake, can you come up here and help me with something real quick? I did not talk to Jake about this before. He's coming on up. Everybody give it up for Jake quick. Jake, if you could just stand right here on my tarp. Right there. I'm just kidding. There's nothing out there. There's nothing out there. I just wanted to mess with him a little bit. All right, we understand that everything that has been given to us has been given to us by God, right? So Jake, here is a bean, all right, a bean. And, and this, God gave Jake this bean. And maybe some of you are like, that's all I feel like I have in my life is beans. It's okay. And, and, and God gives us this bean. And we all know that this bean, it has the potential that if it's, if it's released into the ground, that it can produce even more. Right? It, it, it can produce more than, than what it is right now. But so often what happens is we receive something from God, and rather than releasing it, what we do is we hold on to it. Say, I, I don't want to give that away. I, I, I got I to gotta keep a hold of this thing. Understand this, that that bean in your hand, it's not going to produce anything. It, it, it's, it's as good as dead in his hand. I don't care if there's 10, 100, 1,000 beans in there. It's not going to produce more. And God comes into your life, and God wants to bless you. Who's thankful that, that God has some blessings for us, right? And God comes in, and he wants to give you more. So he begins to pour out. And nothing's getting in. We're, we're, we're closed off to what God has for us. And God, he, he's, he's like, hey, I, I've got more for you. Would you, just, would you just let me give you some more? And he's pouring it out, but nothing gets in. Stuff might sit there, but we're never really fully receiving what God has for us. But if you just open up your hand, back to the bean. You got beans. If rather than holding on to it, when we receive it, if we release it into the ground, go ahead. Now put your hand back out. Now you're in the posture to receive again. And when you're in the posture to receive, God says the measure you use will be measured back to you. So now you've been trusted with a little, you've been trusted a little more. Receive and release. Receive, release. Receive, release. Somebody get this boy a vacuum. Here's the thing that's awesome about God. Is, is God, like God doesn't run out, right? God's got a whole lot more beans, right? There's no shortage on beans for God. And he's saying the measure that you use, we measure back to you. And as you are faithful with little, you can be faithful with more. So I think you're going to need a bigger container. How many are thankful that God is the God of immeasurably more, of, of abundance, that God has so many blessings that he's willing to pour out? That if you would learn to receive and release, he's got more blessings for you. Receive, release. Receive, release. Receive, release. Come on, who's thankful for God's blessings this morning? Thank you, Jake. God's got more for you. God's got so much more. If, but it's all about releasing. It's all about, about letting it go. And you'll see that, that God doesn't want to just give a blessing to you, but he wants to give a blessing through you. And the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. God is the God of not just enough, but of more than enough. And if you would be faithful, if you would steward the small things, God's saying, I've got even more for you. God wants to give a blessing to you so he can give a blessing through you. Turn to your name and say, God wants to bless you. So we see the, the measure that, that we use it's pour back to us. We're, we're stewards of, of our time, right? We're stewards uh, of how we use our time, whether that's Devo, whether that's a prayer time, or that's volunteering somewhere. We're stewards of, of our, our gifts and abilities. Some of you have a lot of good gifts that you've been holding on. Like some of you guys are some great musicians, 
and we have no idea. And you've wanted to keep it that way, but God's saying, hey, that gift that I've given you, you need to use it. That gift of singing, you need to use it. That gift of teaching, you need to use it. That gift of, of serving, uh, of serving in the early childhood and serving in the kids and serving in youth, you need to use that gift. You need to be a good steward and you need to be generous with that. And we see stewards of the gospel. And there's people that we encounter every day in our city who are hurting, who are broken, who have run out on religion. They think, they think that God is mad at them, but there you are at work. There you are at school. And it's our job to be stewards of the gospel and stewards of our material wealth. Everything that has been given to us has been given to us by God. And as we receive and release, God's got even more for you. So here's what's going to happen in just a moment. Um, just uh, last night at 1130, uh, I ordered a Jimmy John sandwich that should be getting here any time now, hopefully. And um, there's going to be a Jimmy John's driver that comes in. And they have no idea, right? I, I called them and ordered it a little bit ago. But today we're going to have a practical way of being generous with our material wealth. And we're going to do what we call here at New Hope a dollar blessing. And we're going to tip this delivery driver who has no idea. He's probably on his way here now. So if, if ushers, if you could come forward. And if you have a dollar, ten dollars, twenty, a hundred dollars. We did this in early service and we're going to do it again this service. Ushers, when, when you have that, that money, you can just bring it right up here. Here's, here's something that I talked with first service about, is they, is they gave and I told them that this was going to be happening in second service and they didn't get this opportunity that you guys are going to get here in just a moment, hopefully if he shows up, uh, of seeing this person receive this. But our giving, it, it isn't conditional, right? Lots of times our generosity is given and we, we don't see the fruit that comes from it. It's, it's an unconditional thing. And we're not giving to this person that, that's going to be coming in here in just a moment. We're not giving to them um, to be like, all right, New Hope gave you this tip. Like, uh, oh. Hey, man, you got my sandwich? Nope. I just saw someone walk in. <laughs> Can't see with these lights. But our giving, it's, it's unconditional. We're not giving with the expectation, all right, we gave you this tip, now you have to come back to New Hope, right? That's not it. We're not giving with this condition of like, all right, a measure that I use is gonna be measured back to me, so I, I gave them $10, now I'm gonna get $10 back in return. Our giving, it's, it's unconditional because God, his love, it's unconditional, right? As Christians, we should be the most generous people on the planet. We should give the most because we have been given the most. God gave his one and only son. So what's, what's $5? What's $10? What's $20 to me? If God gave his son, then I should be as generous with my money as I can be. So before this person comes in, would you just join me in praying for them? Jesus, I thank you. Uh, for whoever this person is that, that will be walking in these doors any time now. God, I pray that, uh, that they would be reminded that, that you love them, that you have more for them, that, that you see them. I pray that this money would, would go to meet a need that they have in their life, that it would go to bless them. I thank you for a church who is, who is generous, who is faithful in, in giving. God, I pray that we would be the, the most generous people because we've been given so much that, that, we, would, that we would give it back and that, that we would see fruit that comes from that. In your name we pray, amen. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the worship team come on up. And we're going we're gonna, to, if you just stand with me all across this room. Who's thankful that, that we've been given the, the, the greatest gift ever? Right? That's something to celebrate. That's something to be excited about. We've been given such a big gift. We should give a big gift. Our life, right? And what you'll see is that as we are generous, as, as we are faithful with the things that we've been given, that, and we're stewards of that, that God is going to reward that, and we're going to see people come to know Jesus through that time. Sandwich was supposed to be here at 11.30. And when, peop- when the waiter or the kitchen messes up your food, doesn't get something, forgets something, and they walk in this church, how would you treat them then? Right? So remember that in the public, to be kind to servers who don't make very much money, and this delivery boy is going to be blown away. And in a minute, I'm going to bring this money from the early service and right in front of him add it to this. And, uh, right? And those people gave not even seeing it. But I just wanted to point that out because unless your heart has been changed, you don't have to give her. By nature, we're selfish. We need to pray, God, change my heart because I can't have a giving heart unless God changes my heart. Uh, so I just wanted to share it because it came to me, Pastor Zach, yeah. that so many times we can be so rude. We call ourselves Christians. And the least tippers and the most rude customers there could be because we're so demanding. That's not how we should be. So we're going to wait here for this guy. <laughs> Brian, call the store and see if they've... What's that? Merle Hay. Yeah. Merle Hay. So here's what we'll see is that as we're generous, we're going to see people come to know Jesus. And it's not conditional. It's not I'm doing this so they come to know Jesus. It's I'm going to be generous, and they're going to see that there's something different about me. Right? Being generous, that's contagious. Like, you ever see the people on on social media that leave, like, a $1,000 tip, and you're like, man, someday when I have the money, I'm going to do that. Right? That's contagious. So let's be contagious. Let's, Let's let the world see what we're doing, and let's let it overflow. Let, let's be so generous. So if you just bow your head and close your eyes. This morning, I, I talked about giving our, our, our heart to Jesus, giving everything. And how he didn't come for just a makeover, but he came for a full takeover. And if you are ready to, to give your heart to Jesus, you say, maybe he's had this little bit of my life, but today I want to give him every part of my life. If that's you, would you, would you just raise your hand saying, that's me, Pastor Zach, today I want to give Jesus my whole heart. I want to surrender everything. He can have a full takeover of my life. See your hands. The next group is this, is is today you're making the decision, I'm going to be generous. I'm going to be generous with my time. I'm going to be generous with my money. I'm going to be generous with the gospel. I'm going to be generous with my abilities. If that's you, would you just raise your hand saying, that's me. I see your hands. Let's be the most generous people out here. Jesus, thank you for every person here. Thank you that this is a generous church that loves people. And that cares to let our world know Jesus. Here we pray, amen. Hey, is that my Jimmy John sandwich? Can you come on up here? I, I ordered that. That's for me. You guys can sit down. Sit down. Hey, man, thank you so much. Hey, today we're, uh, we're doing something a little different here. Um, we're talking about being generous. And this is actually a very generous group of people. Last year, uh, we gave over a million dollars to missions. And today, um, we didn't know who you were, uh, but today we wanted to be generous with you and we wanted to, uh, our church gave you a tip um, this morning. And all of this here, I don't know how much it is, um, but all this is, is for you and it's, Know this, it's not some sort of conditional thing where we're saying, all right, here you go, come to our church. All right, that's, that's not it at all. We just want to be generous and bless you. And um, this, this last week, uh, on Monday, we have a, a staff meeting, and I told the staff what I was going to do today. And uh, I began just praying for you. Um, and think about the coincidence of this, okay? And staff, we talked about uh, we could order pizza. We could order Panera. 
Uh, we, could, we could do Grubhub, but we landed on Jimmy John's. And think about the coincidence that it was your Jimmy John's and that you took the shift today and that you took this delivery. And actually, I don't think that's coincidence at all. I think God, God had a plan for that. Um, and I don't know where you're at on, on, uh, with God and with church and religion, and, and that's, that's, for, that's for you to do with whatever. But I felt like God told me this. He told me to, to tell you that he sees you. And, and he, 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 whatever it is that's happened in the past, that he has more for you. Um, and I just wanted to say that to you and share that with you. And I, do you mind if I just pray with you uh, this morning? And also, the people that were in early service that never even saw you, that also gave them a bunch of money there. So all this is for you. And like I said, this is not a conditional thing. But we just wanted to bless you. Um, and can I just pray with you this morning? What's your name? Gary. Gary. Nice to meet you, Gary. Is there anything that you could use some extra money for? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's... Yeah. Well, I'm praying that whatever it is that that you have in your ni- life that you need some extra cash for, I, I pray that this would meet that need somehow and that you'd be blessed by it um, and know that there's, there's a God in heaven that, that loves you. Um, he sees you. It doesn't matter what you've done. Um, he's got he's got more for you he wants to have a relationship with you we we're not about this whole religion thing of just following a whole set of rules we believe that this is a relationship that we have with Jesus and um, God wants to have that relationship with you like I said don't know where you're at with that but if I could just pray with you is there anything I can pray for I have my family I guess your family all right <laughs> yeah. Jesus I, I thank you for for Gary uh, and just um, that, that he was the one who came in today, God. I'm, I'm praying and believing that, that he is the person that all of this was meant to go to, and I pray that uh, it would bless him for whatever the need may be, whether that's um, for rent, for, for a car payment, whatever it may be, God. I pray that you would, that you would meet the need there. God, I, I pray for his family, um, that you would just uh, show yourself faithful in that, that, that you would make yourself known to their family, that, that they would feel your love, and, and that you are there for them. God, I pray that Gary would be reminded this morning that, that you see him and that you have more for him. And I just thank you for every person that's here this morning that, that gave not knowing who this would be, um, that we have such a generous group of people. And here we pray. Amen. Amen. So this is for you. Do we have like a baggie or? Yeah, just take that out. Now here's the deal. You can... Uh, you can tell people at work about this, or you can, you don't have to, you don't have to tell them. You just be like, yeah, so here's this churches, you know, man. This is not just a non-relief for income tax. Uh, you take the tip that's 10% of the bill, that's your tip. The rest of the tip that you give is not a tip. It's all tip. So So you don't need to turn this up on your tax. You never got <laughs> What's the largest tip you ever received before today? Uh, 30 bucks. I think this is a little more than 30 bucks. There you go, Gary. God bless you. Would you just join me as we sing this song? And this is our heart. Our heart's not just to, to be generous and think like, oh yeah, we did that. Our heart is so that people would come to know Jesus. And we might not see the fruit of that, but we're trusting that as we release the seed, as we plant the seed, that it'll it'll come to pass. So would you just lift up your voice and sing this with me? Let's make that our prayer this morning, that our eyes could see hurting and broken people, that we would see that need, and that we would be stewards of what God's given us, be generous, and we would meet the need. Jesus, I thank you for every person here this morning that just like Gary, they aren't here by accident, God. That you, ha- that you have them here on purpose, for a purpose. God, I pray that, that New Hope would be good stewards of what you have given us. That we would be generous with the things that you have given us. And that we would see people come to know you through that. God, I pray for Gary as he leaves here this morning. God, I pray that you would just bless his life, that you would bless his family. Uh, I pray that, that maybe if he's questioning things about God, about religion, God, that, that today that you would just show him your love. And just 
Remind him that, that you see him. God, I thank you for such a generous group of people who is willing to give. And I pray that as we leave these doors, that our generosity wouldn't just stop here, but it would go into our city. Open our eyes, like we sang, see hurting and broken people. In your name we pray. Amen, amen, amen.